expert here. Um, I think I've given everyone recording privileges. If you haven't, just shoot a note. Uh, but we can start with questions for Josh and please address them through the chat. Um, if you have any, please. Uh, first question, we'll go to Kyle Austin from M Live. Hey, Josh, good to see you. Uh, just wanted to know what, um, I guess, Tuesday night and then Wednesday was like from a player's perspective. You know, you prepared for that whole game. How did you find out that it wasn't going to be played? And, and how did you guys kind of work through that situation? Uh, first of all, hey, Kyle, how you doing, man? Good to see you. Um, you but it definitely was tough um, because you put all the, you know, you put all the time in to prepare for the game. And it's not just the, the time physically, but also the time mentally. You know, you kind of get yourself in a certain way at a certain mindset. And so, you know, once they kind of told us that we weren't going to be able to play anymore, uh, it was kind of a letdown. Um, and not even just from a player perspective, you also have to think about our coaches as well. And they put in so much time um, in preparing us, you know, through um, the scout scouting reports and different things like this. So, you know, it was kind of, it was, it was tough on everybody's end um, you know, to not, you know, not be able to play. And even the fans too, as well, the people who were watching us and all the Michigan State fans, I'm sure it was tough on them as well. So, you know, but that's the nature of this year. And so you have to be able to adapt and overcome. We'll go next to Lindsay Huddleston from SMS. Great, uh, thanks. Uh, here's a question for you, Josh. The other night, uh, Coach Izzo talked about uh, leaders like you having to step up so not to have this winning fatigue that I was asking him about. What is it that you bring as a veteran and as a captain that players, uh, that other coaches don't necessarily bring to the players to help them during this time when you have all this uncertainty? Um, I think, you know, I've been blessed and fortunate enough to be on a, a few different teams here in a few different, um, you know, a few, uh, few different seasons. You know, my first year was, was a tough year, my freshman year. Um, you know, my sophomore year, you know, we had one of the better teams in the country. We were number one, you know, for a lot of that year. Um, my junior year, we had a, a, a great team as well. So, you know, just being on those different teams and having that different experience, I think the one thing I've learned, you know, throughout all those different years was to was to be able to know how to stay even kill and not necessarily be moved by results, but just be moved by um, your goals and what you set out to be focused, focused in to do. And, you know, what we're focused in to do is get better each and every day. And, you know, one thing that I kind of always say is that, you know, you can't really determine a true champion by how he acts when he wins or loses. Uh, but you determine a true champion by how he prepares, you know, the attitude that he brings, regardless of the outcome. And so, you know, our focus as a team is not really, of course, we want to win. But at the end of the day, it's about us getting better and just constantly keeping our hand to the plow and staying focused with, you know, with everything that we have to be focused on. And then, you know, letting the results, you know, follow what it may, because it's ultimately it's things that we can't control. So we just have to control the controllables and let everything go uh, the way it should go. Right, right, I appreciate that, thank you. Yes, sir. Good we'll to go see you, man. To, you we'll too. go next to Jana Bardell from State News. Hi, Josh. My question's kind of similar to Kyle's. I'm just wondering, you guys are in Virginia Tuesday night how did you find out the game was postponed? Who told you guys? And what kind of actions did you take after you found out to come back to East Lansing? Um, we had a team meeting. So it was definitely, definitely weird because we had already had our, you know, regular team dinner that we always have. And then everybody was, you know, went back to their rooms, getting ready to just, you know, lay down and get ready for the game tomorrow. And then we got like a text um, telling us that we had a team meeting at 1115. And so, um, Coach told us the news and like I said, it was definitely tough, you know, on everybody because everybody, you know, put in somewhat of an effort um, in so many in so many different ways. And so to just not be able to play that game definitely was a hard pill to swallow. But like, you know, like we've been saying this whole, you know, this whole this whole year, this this season, this year is definitely not, you know, the normal year that we're used to. So we have to be able to you know, just to continue to adjust and just keep moving forward. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. We'll go next to Chris Solari. Hey, Josh, good to, good to see you. Um, good to see you. Um, I, I got kind of a, a question off all of this. Um, do you feel that you guys should be playing right now? I mean, especially as a guy who's spent so much time away from the game, 
um, you know, with your injuries, I would imagine, how, how are you mentally dealing with, with this? I mean, do you feel like you should be playing as, as a collective? And what does it mean for you to be playing uh, through all this after all that time off? Uh, I, w- I would say, first of all, you know, for me to be able to play right now, uh, it's definitely exciting. Um, like you said, I haven't played in two years, so I'm just grateful, you know, to have the opportunity to be able to play, you know, whether I play five minutes, whether I play 40 minutes, 10 minutes, uh, whatever the case may be, you know, I'm excited to be back on the court be look- because I haven't been able to be on the court. Um, and, you know, I-, I think, you know, that's something that that's based upon how other people feel um, in terms of whether we should play or not. I think for me personally, I think it's great that we're playing because at the end of the day, you know, we're all basketball players and we want to play the game of basketball. And so for us to have the opportunity, you know, to be able to play this game due to the circumstances that we have right now, I think that's, I think that's great because I don't, I don't think as basketball players, we don't necessarily all always realize um, the amount of inspiration that we give to other people. And you have to think about it this way. It's almost like when you wear your mask, um, you know, a lot of times you wear the mask, majority of the time you wear the mask because you're thinking about other people. And that's how it is, you know, in terms of us playing this game. Of course, we know we're individuals, but we have to realize that it's bigger than us. You know, it's something um, more than just what we see, you know, it's other people that we're inspiring, that we're kind of encouraging to keep going on in this trying time. And I can't tell you how many people that I've had, you know, reach out to me and, and you know, commend me or, or, you know, give me some encouraging words about us being able to continue to play and us playing in spite of everything that's going on. So I think it's hard on everybody, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, everybody's making sacrifices. Everybody's um, doing things that's hard on them. But I think, you know, we all have to realize that it's not necessarily about us, but it's about um, the people that we're playing for and, you know, I think that's what it's about, you know, using your platform to inspire and to encourage people uh, to just continue to just keep fighting in life. As a follow to that, did, did you guys as a collective have any conversation about opts outs or anybody opting out? Because as we see it in football, but obviously your whole roster is there. So, I mean, it sounds like it seems like you guys were pretty committed and unified on playing. Well, you know, I think. Um, Coach Iz is such a great leader um, in the way that he kind of goes about things. And one thing that he always created, one thing that he did, he always created created the atmosphere um, for us to be able to communicate and see if we were on the same page. We had meetings um, constantly before the season. Um, and, and then even as a team, we communicated as well. And, you know, everybody was on the same page. And that's one thing that Coach is big on is, is that we're all on the same page. And he doesn't want anybody not to be on the same page. And and he realizes that at the end of the day, we're people, we're going to have difference differences of opinions, but you know, if we can somewhat be on the same page and we can communicate and be transparent upon about how we feel, um, he loves for us to do that. And so as a, as a leader, he has created that space for us all to be able to talk about how we feel about everything that's going on. And, you know, within those meetings, everybody, you know, agreed on the same thing. And that's to play basketball and to go out and have fun and just to enjoy this game. We have time for a couple more. We'll go first to Aaron Beard from the Associated Press and then to Audrey Dahlgren. Hey, Joshua, a lot of guys are, a lot of teams are dealing with the same things right now. Games that are being rescheduled and called off, preseasons with no exhibition games. But not every team has some older guys or a core of older guys. You guys have some experience. How much do you think that helps this group and just sort of trying to manage what you're doing, you know, each day with things that are changing by the minute? Um, Well, I think experience plays a big key uh, in any, in and on any, every team. Um, You know, obviously I haven't had, I haven't had any experience. I don't have any experience under my belt in terms of what we're dealing with, you know, this season, you know, in terms of the virus and different things, like that, but I do have experience under my belt in terms of, you know, knowing how to deal with adversity, knowing how to deal with highs and knowing how to deal with lows. And so I think, you know, kind of at the end of the day, if you have any type of experience, it definitely helps your team. And and that's kind of what, 
you know, what has been helping us. And I think it's going to continue to help us, especially later on down the road when we, when we really get into the Big Ten uh, games and we really get into the meat of the, you know, the conference play. And so I, um, I think experience is big and I think it's definitely has, it definitely has helped us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Last question for Josh is from Audrey Dahlgren. Hey, Joshua, I hope you're having a good day. Hello. How are you doing? Um, I'm good, thank you. I was going back to kind of what Chris was mentioning in a sense, uh, the mental aspect of it. How much do you think that being able to play right now is better for you and your team mentally versus not being able to play? Um, I think that's, I think that's really the best for us because, like I said before, we're used to playing basketball, and so a lot of times it's tough on you mentally when you're not able to do something that you're used to doing. You know, as humans, we're creatures of habit, and so when you kind of break that 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 habit or that routine, you know, within your life, that's when the the struggle uh, begins to happen. And so I think for us as basketball players, us having the opportunity to play the basketball right now is definitely helping us mentally. Um, and so, you know, I, I'm just thankful that, you know, we're able to have a season, especially, you know, with all the different things that's going on right now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Josh, thanks so much for taking the time and we'll be uh, up with Coach Izzo shortly. All right, thank you guys, have a good one. Thanks Josh, see ya. Thanks. We are uh, joined by Coach Izzo here. And I think everybody can hear me. And Coach, if you're ready and uh, want to start with an opening statement and then please address questions through the chat. Well, yeah, you know, we, uh, I guess we're doing what the military says, you know, you adapt and overcome. We're adapting to new situations, overcoming what, you know, the frustrations and disappointments that we have to deal with. And um, everybody was looking forward to playing Virginia. There's no secret about it, not only Joey, but all of us were. And as a coaching staff, we were just to see where we were at uh, is, is really important. But we've adjusted. We got back. We practiced almost immediately because a day of travel counts as a day off or a day on. So we practiced then and we gave them yesterday off, which was great. Um, I got to actually go look at a little football practice for an hour. That was fun. But uh, got a lot of film work done myself yesterday in Oakland. Players got to relax, although it's near finals time, so they had a lot of work to do. So they were all disappointed, especially Joey, but they realized that we got to move forward. Our focus since then has been nothing but Oakland. Um, and uh, we're excited to be back practicing today and, uh, and getting a chance to play on Sunday. As far as Oakland's concerned, it's Difficult game for the media, for the coaches, for the players, for everybody. I mean, uh, my staff said it best. 
after watching film on them against Michigan, especially against Oklahoma State, uh, they said, Coach, this is the best 0-6 team in the history of the world. And I only say that because uh, I told you guys every week that COVID is going to come go. It's going to affect some teams differently. Well, you know, it was three, four weeks ago, they had 14 days of quarantine, coach, players, everybody. So uh, I think they practiced two or three days before they went down to Cincinnati. They played three games in three days, got killed by Xavier after two days of practice. And then they got beat by, uh, I think it was Bradley and, and uh, Toledo. And then they go home for a day. They go to Michigan and play their tail off uh, against Michigan, who's been playing really well. And then they had another day. I think they went to Purdue and got killed down there. And then they had four days off to practice for once. And they go to Oklahoma State. It's a two-point game with five minutes left. So um, I'm not trying to make them better than they are, and I'm not trying to make them worse. It's just this. Uh, for 20 years, we've played or more. And uh, there's been years we were really good, and they were really good. And there's years we were really good, and they weren't as good. And there were a couple years when we weren't that good, and they were good. And it seems like of the 20 years, whatever number of games, uh, Greg Campy's a hell of a coach. That's why I play him. And he's got a hell of a program. And uh, that's why I play him. And, uh, and then they're in our state, we're friends, and that's the last reason I play them. But uh, this team is much better than their record. Uh, they get a chance to practice now. They've had a real good practice time before our game. And I'm expecting uh, that's not gonna be any different than 90% of the games we played. It's gonna be a dog fight. Uh, they know us well, he prepares well for us. I mean, he's got some guys, when you get a guy that, you know, like Williams, that makes 10 threes in a game, uh, that's scary. Uh, the Ola Depot, or I'm not pronouncing every name right, is uh, gives us problems because he's athletic in there in the post and he can drive you. And I think more, we've run into some unbelievable point guards. And you look at White, uh, you know, from, uh, from, um, White and uh, Davis, you know, the kids we played against, Notre Dame's kid. Uh, all those kids have been really good point guards that have, I think, played really well. You got Western, you got Notre Dame, you got U of D, uh, and every one of those guys have played pretty well. And, uh, and now this kid Moore runs their team. He's very solid. He can shoot it decent. Uh, but he passes well. He's got a great feel for the game, great hesitation moves. And so saying all that, um, I'm just looking forward to the game. So probably talk too much. Let's go to the questions. We'll go first to Kyle Austin. Uh, hey, Tom. First of all, wondering uh, with Virginia, are you guys going to try to find a new date with them or another non-conference game, or are you just going to go into that conference play? You know, I'd like to find a new date with them, but <clears> – <throat> We both run into problems after this week and now they're in quarantine for a while. So we're trying to get another game going. So uh, it'll leave you guys up to speculation and me up to speculation. And we stuck KP back in his cave and told him to put on that hat he wears, that, um, that think hat. It's, we're trying to find a team to play sometime next week, even though it's finals, I think we can get special exemption for as long as we're at home. So that's what we're trying to do, whether we'll succeed in that, I don't know. The next couple of days will probably tell us. And, and then how did you see your guys handle that situation? Just given that you had gotten so close to it, you had traveled and everything, how, how did they kind of deal with it? How they were great. You know, I told them about 11, 15 at night. Uh, they were disappointed, but great. You know, I mean, I've really set the standard here that the only way we're gonna have a successful season if we learn to adapt and overcome the situations. <laughs> And if, you know, that's a tough pill to swallow. We all agreed, but it was tough for, for Virginia too, I'm sure. And, uh, you know, as my guys tell me once in a while, um, there's a lot of people dealing with a lot tougher things than we're dealing with. And um, so I was bummed out, but I'm not feeling sorry for us. Uh, I feel sorry for people that got a lot worse than we do. 
and uh, we got a pretty good situation going here right now. We're in a pretty good place. We just got to overcome these obstacles. And uh, I, I was surprised. I, I thought even Joey, I mean, we handled it. I think they, they know that uh, things can happen and we have no control over. So control the things we can control. And that's kind of the approach we've taken. We'll go next to Lindsay Huddleston. Great. Thank you, Tom. Um, I got a two part question, if you don't mind. Uh, first part is how important was it for you to try to answer that million dollar question if 250 fans is like 15,000 fans in a pandemic, one. And secondly, with all the unknowns, the uncertainties and the quick turnaround, for those of us who haven't played in the tournament or coached in it, is this anything like the feeling of a tournament with the quick turnarounds, the unknowns, got to be prepared, anxiety, et cetera? Yeah, it's a very good point. I didn't really think of it that way. Maybe I'll start using that because it is a good point. Like we could play a game Sunday and then maybe play Tuesday or Wednesday and we don't even know what we're playing right now. Uh, you know, at least in a tournament, you have an idea of three teams you might be playing, one of three. Now we, we don't know anybody. And uh, so I'll probably use that as a battle cry if we do find a game. And um, coming off a disappointment like you do sometimes, you got to get back up on your feet. And so there, there could be some future value to this. Uh, as I told my players, I told Hauser, as big a disappointment, when do you get to play both brothers leading their teams, top 10 teams, this, that, and the other thing. But there will be worse things in life that happen. And it's just a, a way to try to figure out how to handle them. And, and so in that respect, you gave me another one I'll try to use. All right, no problem. Thanks, Tom. We'll go next to Aaron Beard from the Associated Press. Hey, Tom, I know everybody's dealing with the same problems of unpredictability, no exhibitions, all of that. But you're doing with a, with a roster that's not 10 freshmen. You've got some experienced guys that have been around the game. I know experience matters every year. Is there more of a value to it now just in trying to manage what's going on on a daily basis and with COVID and everything else? I think there is. I think it's a good point. You know, I talked to Mike about it at Duke. I talked to Kel Perry about it at Kentucky, he's got even more freshmen than anybody right now. And um, there's nothing like being able to call. Like today, I called my captains in to talk to them about a couple of things. And you got Foster's a junior. You got, you know, Aaron's a junior and and uh, Josh, a redshirt senior. And so you you got some things uh, experienced there. And, and I think the coaches experience. That's where I think we've got to do a good job. You know, if leadership doesn't do it, uh, how are the kids going to react? So I think that's why we've done all these little things I've talked about from getting an arcade room in the building to trying to spend more time with our kids, you know, uh, just be aware of all factors. Talk to the parents more often. Um, be aware of everything from how they feel about basketball, how they feel about life. I heard one the other night that one of the kids struggled in a game, not our team. And uh, you know, I talked to Mel about some kids that he's dealing with now that parents have it and, you know, the kids don't, but how they react to it. And I said, those are all going to be obstacles we're going to have to overcome. The more experience you have, the easier it is. The more mature you are, the easier it is. But it's never really easy. And I think that's why a team, uh, when they go through some adversity, staffs better be there for them and players better be there for each other. And I think we've done a, if I'm proudest of anything this year, that's what I'm proudest of. I think we've done an incredible job of keeping everybody together and, uh, and trying to understand that each kid's gonna be going through something different. You know, I got Julius Marble who lost his dad this summer, you know. Uh, I've got other kids whose parents have gone through it. Uh, I got DJ who lost his dad, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot to do. And uh, that's why um, for us, my staff, we've really tried to tunnel vision and spend a lot of time with our kids and, uh, and do a lot of things with them. You know, I think I can beat a couple of them in pool now. So uh, I'm, I'm getting better. Uh, not in Xbox, not in Fortnite. I ain't going that far. And I'm not having any Twitter contests with them. So don't, I don't care who's sick and who's not. That ain't happening either. 
there are some things that are definite. Those are a couple of them. But the other stuff, I think having some kids, having a staff that's experienced, and having people wanting to spend time with people has been a savior for us. Thank you. We'll go next to Chris Solari from the Detroit Free Press. I'm a little thrown off by the Fortnite reference. That's that's impressive. Um, I, I wanted to ask you a little a, bit about I got about a 20 year old too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask you a little bit about the the time that you spent uh, in isolation and how much did you and Greg commiserate as you were both kind of going through that at the same time? Well, I did call him once or twice, but uh, and then talked to him after and kind of figured out who had what, as I've done with a lot of coaches. I mean, I've called coaches I don't even know just to give them a little support and also <clears throat> try to figure out what each person has gone through. But, um, you know, I think for Greg, what was hard is, you know, I had DJ and my staff here and my players were still practicing. So I joked about it, but I'm, I'm, I'm starting to wonder if I should take another COVID two weeks because, uh, you know, our guys got through it well. They, they've been playing pretty well. They practiced well. Well, Greg's kids were in quarantine too. So he couldn't even have his team practicing for the most part. And that's what I think makes it harder for him and made it harder for him. Now he's coming out of it and uh, just in time to play us, you know, but uh, Greg and I talked about it a little bit, but uh, you know, like who wants to talk about being stuck in a basement for 11 days? You know, uh, I told you, I hate my basement, uh, but uh I don't plan on spending any time there till spring. We'll go next to Audrey Dahlgren. Yeah, but isn't it supposed to be super clean from all the time that you had from quarantine? My basement? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I cleaned it, you know, I, uh, you know, disinfected it. I don't know why I already had it. So I don't know why in the hell I was disinfecting it. Nobody was visiting me, but, uh, you know, I learned a lot. I learned a lot down there. Um, and yet at the same time, uh, you know, how fortunate was I that I had a place to go to? Some people don't. And so, uh, you know, the one thing that I've done this last week is I really looked at uh, so many people and uh, boy, hard to feel sorry about long days or, you know, staying in a basement when people have gone through so much more than I even dream of going through. And and that's what I'm trying to get my team to understand, you know, and if we can ever get back out and get into the hospitals and I think we, you know, we're going to try to do some things by zoom that we can call a couple of people yesterday that were sick, that were alums. And I think I felt better than they did when I got done, you know, helping people is really where it's at right now. And for me, I've got my own family. I got my player family. I, and I got my alumni family and, uh, it's a lot of families, but, uh, a lot of love given my way. It's time to give it back. I, want to, I wanted to ask you to, um, you know, the mental aspect going into the year was something that you've tried to focus on so much. And obviously conversations that have been happening around college basketball right now, whether it's, uh, you know, should you play, should you not play um, mentally from your standpoint, why do you feel it's important to continue to play basketball? You know, one of the reasons I went over to football practice yesterday was one to see Mel, give him a little support. And two, just see how they're dealing with it. You know, you got 120 players out there and it's so different. And football, you know, I mean, uh, man, I remember back 20 years ago, you know, Cedric Irvin thought he was a basketball player. You know, every, everybody likes practicing basketball. I mean, I played football. I even played in college a little bit. And boy, when you get to those October, November days when it's snowing, like up in the UP, those September days when it's snowing and you're going through football practice it's hard you know football practice is, is grinding it's hitting it's strength it's you know where basketball I mean kids will come in and shoot all the time I, mean, I got football guys that come over in the summer and want to shoot and it's 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 more fun I guess I shouldn't say that but I think it is so I wanted to see how they were handling it and uh, I was really impressed with the job Mel has done and their staff and how they're handling things and uh I think personally, I mean, I know there's a lot of controversy out there right now because of comments that have been made and everybody remember this, every coach has a couple of X factors. The state he lives in, the county he lives in sometimes, 
uh, the conference he's in, the university he works for. And then the big one is, you know, how his team feels. And I started calling parents and having Zoom calls real early. I had Zoom calls with my players when they weren't even on campus. Uh, we've talked a lot about it since players are back. When the season started, we talked a lot. When we talked about missing Thanksgiving, talk to them. When I talked about missing Christmas, talk to them. So don't let anybody act like this is a dictatorship where the coaches or the, the uh, Big Ten Conference is making us play on Christmas Day. This was something, once we decided that our kids probably had to be up here at Christmas, um, I actually talked to Jawan Howard because he played in the NBA. And, and, you know, there's nothing like Christmas Day in the NBA. So especially then I said, well, NBA isn't going to be playing then. Let's us take over Christmas Day. And that thing got rolling a little bit. Then the NBA came back. But our players were excited about it. Our players know the most they get at Christmas is three, four days would be a miracle. And sure, they want to be with their family. I'd like to be with my family. But again, think about all LeBron sacrificed and those guys making millions of dollars. Think about other people that are in, you know, my players get to stay in a nice apartment and this building that has got everything you could ask for. There's a lot of people don't have that. And I, I really believe this. I believe everybody has their own right to their own opinion, but there's no way I believe my players would be mentally safer, physically safer than to be right here with us. Sure, their parents are going to miss them and they're going to miss them and an aunt and uncle and a grandparent. But we're in an, a pandemic that has never happened. And our job is to make sure we keep them as safe as we can. And players go home, buddies are going to come over, this and that. There's depression in some areas. Uh, you know, again, Lindsay, you'd be the guy to talk to more than I would be on this stuff. But I really believe mentally, physically, emotionally, uh, these players, I mean, we're going to try to do something for Christmas. If I got to dress DJ up Santa Claus, you know, we're going to try to do something. And we're going to try to make it the best we can make it. And I promise you this, it won't be good as being home with mom, but it won't be nearly as bad as millions of other people are going to go through. And my players are basketball players. That's what they do. And they love to play. And uh, so I think mentally uh, what was tough was being home five months in March, April, May, June, July, you know, and not being able to have a gym to go to. Uh, I think we're mentally better off this way. I think uh, that's my opinion. I agree with our state. I think we should be masking up and doing all the other things, but playing basketball, I think is a mental relief for him. I mean, coming from a guy who sat in a room for 11 days, who I worked quite a few hours most, most of the time, um, retirement got pushed back 10 years. You know, what am I going to do? Sit in a basement? I mean, not only that, I didn't like it. I'm not sure my wife liked it. So uh, retirement for me is way down the line. I've learned something from this. And I use that to talk to my kids and say, my players and say, you know, what do you think's best? What do you want to do? Well, if, if one kid said they didn't want to go home for Christmas, I'd have called them a liar. But under the circumstance of how much you have to quarantine, some states you you can't even enter. Some some places, if you leave the state, you gotta you gotta be out 14 days. I mean, they're just circumstances that we don't have control of. And I think we're doing a hell of a job here. And I think we're doing a hell of a job the way we're testing in the Big Ten. And I got nothing but positive things to say about it. And yet I appreciate everybody's got their own opinion. Everybody's got their own kids to deal with. But mine are, are really doing well. Um, they're feeling well. And we're taking that pulse every single day. And I feel good about it. We'll go last question to Tony Paul from the Detroit News. Hey, Tom, most of my questions have been answered. You just touched on it a little bit. Um, but Coach K's comments specifically, were you surprised by those comments? And do you, you know, he's kind of taken some heat from a lot of people in the college basketball world. Do you think that's unfair? Well, 
I can tell you a lot of things in the last three, four years that I thought were unfair, but uh, uh, you know, that's our job to take heat. We get paid to take heat, but I, you know, listen, when we went down there and played, it was so professionally done. It was, everything was spot on. They did a hell of a job and they're testing and all the things they did. If he feels this is what's best for his team, you know, he might have more young guys than I, maybe he doesn't have enough veterans around. Maybe uh, their circumstances in their state are different. I am not here to judge somebody else's, especially people that I have respect for. But the only thing that I would question for all of us is basketball players love to play basketball and uh, they love their family. Hey, we're going to get to see mom and dad. It might not be on Christmas. We're going to get to see the grandparents. Things are going to start going in a better way. I, I, I really believe that, uh, you know, if we get this virus under control, we, you know, we get the shots. So, we, you know, if they're coming down the road sooner or later, good things are going to happen. But right now I do feel I have an obligation to a Josh Langford or an Aaron Henry or players that are juniors and seniors and might not ever get to play college ball again. And uh, so for us here, uh, this is what we've chosen for, for Mike. That's what he's chosen. I don't think anybody should give anybody any heat. I just want to make sure that it's not implied. Like if you think, if you agree with everything he said, don't think that I'm taking my kids away from Santa Claus. You know, uh, or don't think I don't care about their mental health. Uh, I think every coach and every state and every county and every university is dealing with it a little differently. I'm not sure I'm crazy about that. You know, I wish we were all on the same page. This unity thing we're talking about, I think it should be with everything. And uh, I think we all have an obligation to help the person next to us. And uh, but if he thinks that's the best way for his team, I respect and admire it. But I just want to make sure, don't take that as, I don't care about my team. I don't care about my mental health. Because I've heard that being said for some of us that believe we got to keep moving forward. I have been a mask carrying, card carrying guy my whole time. I believe this virus is serious, but I just, for some reason, believe I can control my kids here even better because when they go home, it's not that the parents won't control them, but all their buddies are going to want to be around. And some of them are going to be, you know, in different ways, different than others. And so I think this is the safest bet for right now, but that's just my opinion up for debate, up for criticism too, but I've done enough homework and I feel good enough talking to my players that I'm comfortable telling you we're in the best position and best place we can be in. These kids are in the best place they can be in for right now, according to me and them. And we're going to keep moving forward until somebody tells us differently. So I'm, uh, I don't think anybody should criticize. I don't think anybody should compliment. I think you should trust that we're doing the best we can do for each one of our situations because we can't get uh, universally uh, in agreement. I mean, uh, I hate to say this and maybe I'll get ripped, but I, I, we can't even agree on masks or no masks. You know, there was a time we couldn't agree on seat belts or no seat belts. The difference is those save my life, a seat belt, my mask might save your life. And so I'm gonna stick with that. I'm not making it political, I'm making it medical. And uh, as I said, I love where we are as a staff. I love where my team is. And uh, I feel bad that we're not going home for Christmas. I feel bad that I won't spend much time home for Christmas. I'm gonna do what I think is best for my team and my, my position here. And uh, I know this, uh, I might have Christmas in May. Um, uh, I'm going to find a way to still celebrate it. It's just going to maybe be a little later and, uh, but I'll make up for it. That's a, that's a promise. I'll make up for it and have some fun with it. And uh, hell, I could go back to the UP in June and still have Christmas because there'll still be snow on the ground. What the hell's the difference, you know? Any other Sorry. questions? You got me fired up now.
What's your opinions? Let me ask a question for once. What's your opinion? Tony, what's what? your opinion? I have no opinion. <laughs> Audrey, what's your oh, chicken? What's your opinion, Audrey? On what? What's your opinion? I have a lot of Chris? opinions. I mean, on this situation. On the masks or no masks? No, no, on whether, you know, we should play or not play or move on or not move on. You know, I'm. I will say this. I think that mentally for the health of everyone, you need to have somewhat of a routine and a schedule of what you're used to in order to feel as though you are continuing to flourish in your own mind. That's more professionally said than I did. So hats off to you. But as you can see, it's, it's tough, Tony. It's tough, Audrey. It's tough, Chris. It's tough for all of you. And it's tough for me. And y'all got kids. And some of you have had it. Some of you haven't. Um, you know, some of you are not responsible for other people. Some of you are. It's, uh, there's no blueprint for this. Uh, that's why we're all kind of trying to do the best we can do. But I, I think I'm fired up in a positive way because I feel like I've did my due diligence and my homework. And uh, really what I care about is not how I feel. I care about how my players feel, my own kids feel. And I feel like we're doing what, what is best for us. And, uh, and I respect everybody that's doing what's best for them except if you don't wear a mask, then I have no respect for you. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, Take coach. care. You guys gotta be ready to share your opinion nowadays. Yeah, I know. I'm surprised that nobody else wanted to speak up a little bit, so. You handle it so well. I tried. I just, you never know. These Zoom calls go out to the whole world, so <laughs> gotta be careful. Are we, Max? Are you having another player? See you around. Audrey, that's it. I think they're practicing here in about five minutes. So. Okay. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. Yep. Thanks. Okay. Well, bye. <laughs> See you guys.